Everybody, welcome to Goots is Wrestling Pod with your co-host Andrew Lee, bro. Andrew Lee, how you doing? Doing great, man. How are you? Good. If you're a member of the Patreon, you got this early because unfortunately I have to go to California for personal issues. Um, uh, so you know, if you're hearing this next week, you should join the Patreon because sometimes you get episodes super, super early. Yeah. yeah. Penis surgery. That's what he's going in for. Only a no, no, no. only a dollar. Uh, to just get the audio version. I think we're worth a dollar a month. A dollar a month for four episodes. I think so. Sometimes look five. At considering... Look at the face. It's worth like, a dollar. That's five dollars. Look at the face. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I check out my shirt in honor of... Uh, Ooh, Austin. Austin. Yeah, that's a nice shirt. Who had one match tonight. Dude, this show... I, I, I thought this show, except for one match... This show was atrocious. I think I might say the same thing. This show, although there was a second match that was like, all right, it was like it's like I, you know, but you know, but yeah, I really. Oh shit! I almost spilled. You know, YouTube. watching these WCW shows, I I used to be like, why is like I I used to hear like Vince doesn't like tag team wrestling, and I also heard that Eric Bischoff said he didn't like tag team wrestling. I used to be like. Why don't those guys like tag team wrestling? I understand. <laughs> it. I understand why you cannot like tag team wrestling. When tag team wrestling is bad, it's fucking horrendous. I'll tell you what. This show almost made me hate tag team wrestling. Bro. Yeah. Like, like I like I like tag team wrestling. I was watching this pay per view, going, I think I hate tag team wrestling. And you know what it is? Like people like to shit on Halloween Havoc '91 because of that Chamber of Horrors. And they like this shit on, um, like, I don't, they like this shit on, like, other things they call Russell Crap, like Bray Wyatt's Swamp Match at Extreme Rules 2020. But at least, like, and the Firefly, with the Randy Orton fought Bray in the house. But at least, like, that's, that's like trying something different. Like, I think this is more offensive to me. This is more offensive to me because you're essentially just, you're essentially just killing three hours and asking me, like, I, well, I didn't pay this now, but you're asking, the uh, kid in ninety two for thirty dollars, and then you're just killing three hours and going home with this show. I think that at least with that Halloween Havoc match, they're trying something different. Um, yeah, I see what you're saying. That they are, yeah, it's something different. This is um, they're trying to entertain. This um showed me why they were not beating WWE one hundred percent. That's all. I, that's that was my main takeaway. Like this, this is why. This is why when I was a kid, I thought you guys were like, like, you know, like some parts of you got like, like WB, WCW, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool, like staying and everything. But for the most part, I knew they were lame, right? And this kind of confirms everything I believe when I was a kid. You know, I'm a glad I didn't give them more attention than I did when I was younger, you know? Yeah. You know, a lot of times, and I, I bet I guarantee you, so this around the same time, Ultimate Warrior is speeding with Papa Shango and he's like oozing. He's having ooze come out of his fucking face and shit, right? Love that. Love that shit. And I guarantee you, Bill Watts and some other WCW, like, uh, they're not writers back then. Uh, producers are like, see that? That's bullshit. What real wrestling? That's bullshit. If you have a problem with the ooze coming out of Ultimate Warrior's fucking face, but you think this is great, you're what's wrong with wrestling. Because, like, I can't, I don't understand why you think this is a viable way to compete with the ooze coming out of Ultimate Warrior's face. Like, I don't, I just don't understand why you think this, this is horrible. And here's the other thing. The Steiners aren't even on the show. And you know why? Because Scott Steiner got injured because you took the mats off the floor, you fucking idiot. Oh, really? Did you see the bump where he gets injured? He lands right on the fucking concrete. Mm. Was that a legit injury? I mean, I, I, I have to do research, but... I mean, if you're, if you, I see him get thrown on the concrete knee first. They then say he's injured. They can't be in the tournament. And they interview, and you know, Bill Watts says that I have to assume that that was legit injury on the floor because they don't have the mats. So now you don't have your best. You have a tag team tournament show and a tag team that has been like stealing. I mean, for you personally, they've stolen every show the last few shows and now they're not on the show. They're just not on the show. No, they are on the show. We'll get into that part later. Well, let's get other... right into this, bro. Let's get, right get into, into it. it. The Great American Bash in 1992. The Battle Beyond the Bell, which is 
I don't think it's true at all because this was this this whole show was for belts. Yeah, everything was about so a belt. What, what, what the fuck do you mean the battle beyond the belt? What what belt? What's beyond that? Anyway, takes place on July 12, 1992, in Albany, Georgia. I didn't know there was an Albany, Georgia. I didn't know that uh, either. They they're they're no. booking like weird weird areas the last two yeah, shows. Yeah, that's the thing with WCW. They book places I've never heard. Of, you know, like they they go to places. Dude, I still. I do. You know where they used to do shows, and I never hear about it anymore. Winston Salem. They used to like do like big business. Yeah. I've never heard anyone else talk about Winston Salem. I've never, I've never had a comedian that I'm just headlining. It. Dude, now I want. We should headline in Winston Salem. Um, AEW kind of does that too, where they'll go to places. I'm like, hmm, why are they going to this place? You know. But uh, the palace. Not all the time. They go to Chicago and stuff, but like sometimes they go to like a. I'm like, oh, I never heard of this town or city, you know. Yeah, but I've never heard. Of, I don't think WWE. I've never seen WWE, TNA, or or AEW go to go to Albany, Georgia. Never heard of this. Yeah, on Albany, Georgia. But you know, maybe they went to Albany, Georgia because they were able to draw eight thousand people. Maybe that's why. What's going on in Albany, Georgia? So that's they had. They're like, it's the Great American. And if that's the case, that's actually pretty smart to go to some place like there's nothing else there. If we book a show, the whole town, the entire town will come out, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway, I've totally totally seen this, but they'll come out. Yeah. Tony Schiavone, he is uh he runs down the, the teams in the tournament uh and the main event during the intro graphic. We get a lot of fireworks to start the show, and I'm already like, oh this might be good. Fireworks and stuff like crazy amounts. Tony Schiavone and Magnum TA welcome us to inform us that, that the Miracle, they go over to the tag tournament, they tell us that the Miracle Violence Connection, they are already in the semis because uh, they show a recap video of them taking out the Steiner brothers. They like already qualified to the semis. They also mention that the Japanese team, uh, Nogami, has injured his eye. So he's now going to be replaced by Shinya Hashimoto. Mm-hmm. And uh, we they take it down to the commentators. It's Jim Ross and Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura's got this like nasty boys inspired paint splattered suit. Do you like the suit? I did, I did. But once again, I I I just feel like Jess. I just again the 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 chemistry between Jesse and Jim Ross is not there, and I kind of feel like Jesse's now giving up trying because Jim Ross just doesn't. Yeah, Jim Ross isn't really giving. He doesn't give back as much as Jesse. Like, like it's supposed to be back and forth, but Jesse sets him up and he doesn't give back enough. Mm-hmm. Because I think Jim Ross wants to call it straight down the middle. He wants to like focus on the action. He never wants he never wants to deviate from what's happening in the ring, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's I don't blame it, Jesse Ventura for this. I thought Jesse Ventura was great on commentary. But him constantly blowing off Jesse Ventura has made me, has taken down Jim Ross a few pegs for me because it's like, it proves to me that you can't improvise. That so, if you, yeah, so you see it the same way I do. It's not really Jesse Ventura's. No, it's not because Jesse is Jesse's. Because eventually Jesse, this is a show where he's like, okay, so this this company is a sports based presentation. I'm gonna try to be a sports based commentator more so that. The wacky goofy guy and this is when as a kid because i used to watch like the syndicated show on channel two and i and i'm like oh jesse's on and i turned it on because i thought jesse was gonna be like tony you're an idiot and jim ross shut up fatso and oh here comes a mexican you know what I mean? and he yeah. stopped doing that around here he stops doing it because he realizes like i don't really have nothing to work with so i have to be like a real commentator mm-hmm. but even still every now and then he'll like feed jim ross like a joke and jim ross is just like eh. And I'm like, bro, now you. I think less of you now. I feel the same way. I feel the same way. I wonder if it was direction, like Bill Watts being like, "Don't fucking ever just be like a straight sports guy." No, I. I think even if even if no, I think he just was not. He said his podcast he didn't like working with Jesse, and it was his fault. Jim Ross has admitted it's his fault that they weren't a good team. Mm, he did. You know what? Not a lot of men. Will admit when they're wrong. That in wrestling, especially. Yeah, right? I, don't think, I don't think. So I, I don't think Bill Watts was telling him to do that. I just think Jim Ross back then just didn't know how to react. Yeah, he's a little younger. He kind of doesn't understand. Once he goes to with Jim, um, 
Jerry Lawler, it's different. By the time he has more Even experience. Heyman, it's really different. Paul Heyman, he really gives it back to him in 2001. So. Mm-hmm. But like I said, there's not a lot of guys in wrestling who will admit when they're wrong. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Jim Ross can do that, I, I kind of do respect that. Mm-hmm. Here's a man who is wrong, but will never admit it. Two men, actually. Eric Bischoff, he's with uh, Bill Watts. Mm. And Bill Watts tries to explain these fucking confusing oh. fucking rules. He goes, you see, in the NWA tag team tournament, top row moves are okay, they're fine. But regular WCW matches, you see, jumping off the top, to your opponent, that's a disqualification. Now, if you guys are both doing a suplex off the top, or if you're just like both on the top and you both, well, that's okay. And I'm like, all right, we got some kind of explanation, but here's a problem with this. You should have made this clear at the beginning, all the way when it started. Like the commentators before, like every paper, you should have should have been mentioning this. But there were times where it felt like they didn't even know the full extent of the Because they're stupid rules. fucking rules. Mm-hmm. They're, they're changes for the sake of changes that affect match quality and make the show worse. Mm-hmm. And they're stupid fucking rules, and he's a fucking idiot. They he's are stupid fucking, fucking rules, and him trying to explain it now is already a little too late. It's like the he, damage he is done. You. Bill Watts looks confused, and it's his fucking rules. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Bill Watts is uh, supposedly did a great job with Miss South, but man, the three, four years off of wrestling, like, he lost so much, right? He, he's so behind on the times. It's like, it's like he was in a time machine and they pulled him in from the 80s, right? I mean, yeah, but like, I almost feel like, no, this is the thing. I feel like these shows feel like more like 70s shows, not even 80s shows. I feel like... Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Even the most boring, even the most boring WCW shows back that, you know, the Star Caves that we watched had more pizzazz than this. Like, this just feels like like the 70s. It's it's like he almost forgot what he learned in the 80s, bro. Dude, I... I really think... You know what it is? When we see what these other guys... Now that I've really... I've, I've, I've really watched a lot of Fritz von Eric, and now I've seen a lot of Bill Watts, and I've seen a lot of um, Vern Gagne. I realized how fucking dumb these guys were. Like, they were dumb. And I, I've made this point before, um, that Vince, like, was just not that dumb, and he was able to destroy them, right? Mm-hmm. But also, you know who else? It's like Eric Bischoff. Like, like Eric Bischoff's an idiot, and he's five hundred times smarter than than fucking um Bill Watts. It's insane. It's insane how dumb you have to be, though, right? Like, yeah, you, it's like, like you could be an idiot, and you could be successful. And everyone, everyone thinks Bill Watts is like a genius. And I'm like, how the fuck do you watch this show and think the guy who did this like you watch eighty nine WCW? It's so much better than this shit. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, let's get right into it. The first match, so almost everything's going to be a tag team match, which is a mistake right off the bat. WCW oh. loved their fucking tag team tournaments. They love tag team tournaments. I felt like they were always sitting there in the room. What should we do the next year? They're like, you know what's really fun? A tag team tournament. I feel like somebody always says that, and they go, that's a great idea. I feel like this is the fourth or third Tag team tournament I'm seeing in WCW. You know what? You know what strikes to me that that they're fucking. Right. Please, I'm I'm right about that though, right? What? Yeah. It's just just this is. There's too many tag team tournaments on these pay per views. No, but if they're doing so many, it it's got to be because someone keeps suggesting. It. Someone keeps going. You know what we need? We need a tag team tournament. <laughs> you know, you know what it is? This was this was how they and Vince kind of got this attitude. He's older. They think wrestling fans are idiots. They need to kill a three-hour show. So they're like, we'll do a tournament, and we don't have to really think about it. Because mm-hmm. if you do a tournament, then um, that's it. We wrote that three-hour show's written. Now, we really we only have to put thought into Sting Vader. We don't have to put thought into anything else. And then we can focus on other things, like drinking and being racist. Um, so... <laughs> That's that's why they do so many tournaments because they're like, well, these morons won't care. They'll give us the money anyway. And Vince, he only does like one night tournaments every now and then. 
Um, like, and when I he does like it, as Vince got older, mm-hmm. especially like after the two thousands, is when he really his view of the audience really changed. Where he started really thinking that we were stupid, mm-hmm. and you could see it in his booking because it just got super lazy. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. I uh, I um. I put on a. I was trying to fall asleep. And I put on a 2018 SmackDown. You were trying to fall asleep. You should have put on um. Great American I didn't watch this one <laughs> And there is a people still kind of act like WWE is the same WWE. There is a there is a remarkable difference between 2018 WWE and today. WWE can still do like corny shit and stuff, but like I can kind of tell they no longer think we're all a bunch of idiots. Mm-hmm. And that's like a big change. I mean, I not that they. They still have the Miz saying dumb shit. And they still have like dope, dopey angles, but I don't think that they just think that we're a bunch of fucking jerk offs. I don't get that sense anymore. In 1992, I don't think Junior thought we were idiots. Like, yes, you know? and Bill Watts thinks we're idiots. But Bill Watts thinks we're we're idiots. You know, and um, he that's what he's treating us to. We're gonna go. You know who else he thought was an idiot it was Brian Pillman because he's in this opening match for the first tournament match in the NWA tag tournament. Brian Tillman and Jushin Liger, former enemies, now tag team partners against the Russian Nightmare, Nikita Koloff, and the Dragon, Ricky Steamboat, without the family. Mm-hmm. Um, Koloff and uh, Brian Tillman, they start off, and Ventura says he doesn't like Nikita Koloff for abusing women. He abused Medusa. I was like, oh, okay. And then, uh, you don't like that. You're not going to like a lot of wrestlers. Okay. Yeah. Tillman, Tillman is a match. Nobody tell about, nobody tell about Chris Jericho. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, if you don't like that, you don't like using women, man. Brother, I got some news for you. Um, anyway, you're not going to like Steve Austin either. <laughs> uh, Brian Tillman, he's matching Nikita Koloff's uh, power and size with his uh, speed. And, you know, what do you call it? Um, both Pillman and Liger, they work on isolating the key to call up and working on his left, left arm, which I thought was actually pretty good for a tag team. Um, Ricky Steamboat tags in and he starts cleaning up the house. And then uh, there's even a moment where Liger just kind of like jumps through the ropes to the floor for some reason. I was like, why did he do that? It's kind of stupid, but whatever. The one takeaway from this is like most of this match, you can hear Nikita Koloff's like shitty Russian accent. Because he's yelling almost like the entire time, like, come on, referee. And he's like, come on, brother. Come on, brother. You hear him screaming, come on, brother. And I'm like, can you, like, even try to sound no. Russian? Can you be like, come no. on, comrade. You can't do, come on, comrade. You got, come on, brother. I was like, dude, you fucking, like, nobody believes you're Russian. Ugh, it's terrible. But anyway, besides that shitty accent, uh, the match is all right. Liger hits a uh, moonsault, a tombstone, and a somersault splash on Ricky Steamboat. This really excites the crowd. But, uh, but you know, Ricky Steamboat um, is uh, able to tag out and stuff. Jesse Ventura makes a Predator reference in this match, and he also makes a reference to saying, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And I'm, like, starting to think, like, God damn it, this guy loves mentioning the Predator. Because he was in the Predator, and he loves saying that close Sony counts in hand grenades and fucking like horseshoes. He says it's like every pay per view. Every He's trying to get Jim movie. Ross to react. So that's why. Yeah, yeah. Jim Ross doesn't react to it at all. He just like I think he's sick and tired of hearing it. Anyway, Brian Pillman he hits uh, Nikita Koloff with air Pillman and a missile drop kick, but the attention uh, to Ricky Steamboat it caught him getting from getting the three count. Brian Pillman, ultimately, he hits Ricky Steamboat with a crossbody off the top row, but Ricky Steamboat rolls through for the win. What did you think? This was probably my favorite match of the show besides um, the Sting match. However, it's still not very good. Um, I really, I kind of feel like Brian Pillman and Joe Jushin Thunder Liger should have been on the show more. Yes. Had so many fucking matches. Um, I hate Nikita Koloff. I hate him... So I was listening this morning when I went to the gym. I was listening to it uh, at Tony Schiavone's podcast with Conrad, and they were they were reviewing Spring Stampede '98, and Conrad oh. went off that Goldberg was so bad, and if they had given Nikita Koloff the push that Goldberg got, he would have been over. 
and Nikita Koloff was so talented, and Tony Schiavone was like, yeah, you're right. I just want to say to, to Conrad Thompson and Tony Schiavone, if you listen to this podcast, you're both fucking morons. Goldberg has more talent on his fucking left testicle than Nikita Koloff has in his entire fucking body. Nikita Koloff is one of the most overrated pieces of shit on the fucking planet. And if he had went to WWE, he would have been exposed and he would have been the fucking Warlord's butler within a month. That's what he would have been. This guy fucking stinks. I'm so sick of people thinking Nikita Koloff was good because he wrestled Ric Flair in the main event of Starcade and Dusty Rhodes liked him. He fucking sucks, bro. And he's not Goldberg. If he had been Goldberg, they would have fucking had a chance with WWE, but they weren't. When they, Goldberg came out of nowhere, out of nowhere, and they had a, sh they almost had a shot at turning it around with WWE, but then they fucked up Goldberg. But Goldberg just walking to the ring, people were fucking, who is this guy? Don't you ever compare Nikita Koloff to Goldberg. Okay, sorry. Why uh, the Warlord? Warlord is better than Nikita Koloff. That's what I'm saying. No. <laughs> they would have been like, oh, you you know what? Um, you just be fucking uh, Warlord's fucking bitch. You'll be his manager because you suck. You fucking suck, Nikita Koloff. Well, you Sorry, mentioned Eric guys. Bischoff. And Eric Bischoff, he's in the back with the Steiners. Uh, Steiners, who have actually lost the WCW tag titles to MVC, Miracle Violence Connection. Uh, but the Steiners are still IWGP tag champions in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Good and uh, Steiner, Steiner's talking. He goes, yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult not being in this shitty tournament that's going to put people to sleep. But you know what? All the grades have come back up from adversity, and we are going to do the same thing. I'm like, God. In the WWE with Vince McMahon. Yeah, yeah. All right. But we're going to go to match number two, another tag team tournament match. Uh, Hiroshi Hase and Shinya Hashimoto, the replacement, versus the fabulous Freebirds of Michael P.S. Hayes and Jimmy Jam Garvin. Hase and Michael Hayes, they start. And then when Shinya comes in, Jesse Ventura says, you can tell he likes his rights because Shinya is a bigger fella. Uh, mm -hmm. Crickets, but I thought it was funny. Um, yeah, that's just, they dominate most of the match. Did you like that joke? You could yeah, tell was, he likes his right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you could tell he likes his right. I know, you know what? Like, when he says stuff like that, I would have liked it if Jim Ross would be like, like, just be like, oh, how dare you? Don't talk about the man's weight. Like, like, this, man, no this man is this man's an all star champion in New Japan. Who the fuck are you? Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, but Jim Ross just like acts like he never heard it, plows you know? through it. Plows through it. Plows right through it. But anyway, speaking of plowing through the Japanese team, they're plowing through this match because they're dominating most of this match, um, which I think was the right move, but, you know? Yeah. And uh, Shinya, he does this, he even, Shinya Hashimoto, he does this great move too, where he has somebody up in a body slam position and he fucking backflips and he fucking like power slams him in a backflip and he kind of like with a bridge. I thought it was pretty cool. For for a big fat guy, come on, right? That's amazing. Hey, listen, this is why Dave Meltzer gives all the New Japan matches six stars. These guys know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Even if they like the race, you know? Um, while the referee is distracted, uh, Shinya Hashimoto, he hits uh, Jimmy Jam Garvin with a kick to the jaw, and then Hase hits the Northern Lights suplex for the win. Um, thoughts on this match, number two? Uh, I just felt both teams didn't have no chemistry. I felt like it was a mismatch. Um... Michael Hayes doesn't know how to work this style. Uh, it was boring. This is what I started noticing. I don't know if you if you start noticing that there's no noise. The crowd is not cheering. They're not booing. They're not. They're just sitting there quiet, like they're all they're at waiting. the line. What? They're waiting. They're bored. They're bored, and but they're polite enough to not chant bullshit or refund or show your yeah. tits or anything modern fans waiting. would chant. If, if WWE yeah. or AEW put on a show like this, you know? Yeah. Um, I just thought this match, this is when I realized I don't think this is going to be a good show. This was the match I realized that, oh, I don't think this is going to be this good. I don't think it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, this was probably the shortest match on the show. Yeah. By the way, if you guys are not familiar, Shinya Hashimoto, he is going to go on to be a legend in Japan. He's one of the few people who's held, like, 
the multiple world titles, like from different all the different promotions. He will, however, die in 2005 of a brain aneurysm at the age of 40. Yeah, and sadly, he re- he rewatched this show and then just his brain shut. That's that's basically what happened. Yeah, his brain. I can't believe I wrestled that on this show. It's so bad. No. Uh, Hase, he's gonna go. He he not while well, he didn't go up to like the same heights as like Hashimoto. He's gonna go into politics. He's currently a governor in Japan right now. Oh, like Jesse Ventura. Wow. Basically, yeah. I think by the by by the time this is happening, Jesse Ventura has already been a mayor or something, right? He's a mayor. At, he's a mayor right now. In uh, 19- during nineteen ninety two. Wow, interesting. So Tony Schiavone, he's in the back. Uh, no, he's actually uh, not in the back, but he's up at the, I guess the the host booth with Bill Watts and. Hiro Matsuda, and they talk about, hey, we have a partnership with New Japan Pro Wrestling, and if you're enjoying this NWA Tag Team Tournament, boy, do we have some news for you, because we got an NWA Singles Tournament, and the finals is taking place in in the Tokyo Dome in Japan, and a part of this this next moment kind of surprised me. They hold up the NWA title belt, and and Bill Watts says, we're taking Rick Flair's name off. And then Flair. everyone pops. Which was stupid. Why would you fucking mention the name? Because the crowd pops for that. You're right. Because they think they think that they move past Ric Flair. They, and and when you say Ric Flair's name, everyone in the crowd's like, this show would be so much better if Ric Flair had a match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was so dumb. It was almost like it's like, why would you do that? Yeah, it would be would like you... Vince McMahon saying Hogan's name in ninety five. Yes. Like, oh yeah, I should go watch WCW watch Hogan because this shit sucks. Yeah. And uh anyway, he the reason why he takes the name plate off the bell is because he's getting into Hiro Matsuda and he goes, take it to Japan so we could wait uh for the new crowning of the new champion where, where, where when when the finals takes place. Anybody goes Bill Watts does end it with, by the way, Sting is the current WCW champion. And whoever the NWA champion is gonna be, the WCW champion will face the NWA champion. I was like, hmm, interesting. That would be actually kind of fun. Well, anyway. so so the NWA champion just kind of ha- hovers around um, WCW. It's never really considered like a real world championship. And then eventually NWA, I think Bischoff and NWA get into a tiff. And they change it to WCW International Heavyweight Championship. And then Sting and Ric Flair, they merge it so that Hogan, when they know Hogan's coming in, they merge both belts. And then Hogan wins everything at Match the Beach. I actually have a question about this. Why the... F- fuck are they doing this this is so because the, N- the nwa made up with them and the nwa made a deal that we want our belt showcased on your show oh that's why they did this yeah and then and then bishop eventually is like this is fucking stupid and they cut him off but they keep the belt around and then they just eventually merge him they merge it right before hogan shows up it it is stupid I will admit, I think it's stupid. It I is stupid is to have mistake. two world champions around. Yeah, I think this is another mistake that Bill Watts made. If if the NWA came up to me, and at this point, they're almost like nobody. They're almost like nothing. I think the reason he said yes was because, remember, they were just called, they were, they were still called NWA in 89. So, so it's only three years removed. Oh, no, 90, 90. Because they Sting was considered Sting was considered NWA champion. Then he remembered the, fir- the first... NWA broke away from 91. So it's only been a year that they haven't called their champion the NWA champion. So probably Bill Watts like, oh, probably people want this back. You know, it's still new. I think it's stupid. I think it's stupid. I think I think I think history tells us that it was stupid. It's stupid. I can I can kind of see why he said, like, oh, this will bring back fans who like like the NWA and like that belt. But um in the end, it just confuses everything. Yeah. It meant nothing. It just makes it like there's too many titles, you know, and, it it's just kind of, and it, yeah, it feels like it's going backwards. Yeah. Match number three in the tag team tournament, oh, Rick Rude and Steve Austin with Medusa versus Dustin Rose and Barry Windham. Barry Windham and Steve Austin start the match once again. I think these two just love starting the match. This is like the third time in a row we're seeing them start the match, right? Yeah. Jesse Ventura keeps calling Dustin Rhodes and Barry Windham the, the Texicans. And I think he's trying to get that name to stick. He calls them that the whole fucking time. The 
Texican. Well, do you find that offensive? About stock, but... What? Do you find that offensive? No, I just I don't think it's a good name though. No, it's not. It's like it'd be one thing if like one of them was Mexican, but they're both white guys. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's it makes no sense. Or if they were from Mexico or something. And then they moved to Texas. Texas. Yeah, it just makes no sense. It makes no sense, yeah. Dustin Rhodes, he's in most of this match, and and it's even for the most part. There's, there's a moment where Medusa distracts the referee on the apron, which allows Rick Rude to yank Barry Windham by the hair, and then they're going to start getting the heat put on, it's beating up the good guys, beating up the good guys. Uh, Barry Windham getting beaten on most of the time, but he makes this incredible falling backwards hot tag that I really like. He was, like, falling backwards because he's exhausted. But as he's falling backwards, he just like no look tags Dustin. It's a work of art. Dustin comes in, and for some strange reason, this is the only time I think they did it in this whole pay per view. They do this fucking split screen, right? Oh yeah, and it fucking it comes out of nowhere and it fucking like confused the shit out of me and it. Made me miss the finish. The finish happens during the split screen. Yeah, that was fucking horrendous. Yeah, they did it right at the finish, and it made me miss the finish because I didn't know which screen I was supposed to look at, and I had to fucking watch it again. But basically what happens is this. Steve Austin, he's in there with Barry Windham. Dustin Rhodes climbs up to the top rope, and then he hits a flying clothesline from the top for the win. Um... I actually thought this was the best tag team match because... All four men, they just seem to have good chemistry with each other. You know, like when Austin was in there with Dustin Rhodes or Barry Windham, they work. When Barry Windham's in there with um, Austin or Rick Root, it works. Dustin just works with everybody. It's just like they all had good chemistry. Uh, so I personally, I think this is probably the second best match of the night. Um, I, I didn't hate it, but at the same time, I just, I don't think Rick Root and Steve Austin are a good tag team. And um, the split screen thing kills it. It's like typical WCW like production fuck up, you know, like like you guys can't even get like filming a finish right. Um, yeah, I hear what you're saying. It, it, if you if you enjoy old school tag action, this is the closest to it. Yes, I still mm-hmm. like kind of found it a little a little off. But I think also I'm getting bored with the show because this show is like not trying to do anything exciting. They're just having tag matches. I will say this. It was weird that this is the only moment they're gonna do that split screen. I but don't but know they probably probably realize we don't we we're, we don't they probably got nervous so like let's not bring it. Back. They did it and they're probably like, oh my god, that was terrible! Don't do it again! <laughs> like don't yeah, do yeah, it again! Yeah. That was terrible! <laughs> it's so funny. If they they do it once and they just never do it again. It's so funny. Um, so Eric Bischoff he is with Vader and Harley Race. Harley Race has got a nice curly mullet going on. You know who he looks like? Who? In this moment, and I tell you too, with the fucking stash and the fucking curly fucking mullet, he reminds me of Captain Lou Albano in his suit or something. Oh yeah, no, that oh god, he's way he's and way Harley's chubby. Ball. Yeah, and Harley's chubby here too, so it kind of looks like him. Yeah. Anyway, um, they refer to Vader as the uncrowned champion, and Vader does his classic sting, sting. Vader fears no man. And he feels no pain. I love that. I fucking love Vader. Match number four. This is now into the semis of the tournament. We got Ricky Steamboat and Nikita Koloff versus the guys who automatically advance to the semis. Terry Gordy and Dr. Destes Williams. There is a lot of mat work with Dr. Death with both um, Ricky Steamboat and I, uh, Nikita Koloff. That's his specialty, just mat work, mat work, mat work. Steve Williams, he drops. There's a moment where he drops Nikita Koloff on his fucking head, right? But besides that, it's just grappling on the mat, and the crowd is quiet. They're just quiet. I'm quiet. If you thought, it, if you thought the crowd was quiet before, now they're really quiet, okay? Because this is when it really starts getting quiet. Gordy is, like, probably out of the, these four, he's the most exciting of these four. Because, like, when, he, when he's in the ring, he does things that kind of gets... Remember when he... He was getting like hit by Nikita and he's like, oh, he starts doing that old thing and shit, looking at the crowd like, oh, he ain't gonna knock me down. He got crowd into it. But the only problem was he's barely in this match. He comes in, does one or two exciting things, and he tags right back out. And I was like, fuck. 
Yeah, because it's... Watts, Watts, and Jim Ross love Steve Williams. They fucking love Steve Williams. They love Steve Williams. And who wouldn't? If you ever see his dick, oh my god, girl, massive. Anyway, Gordy puts on his Oriental twist STF on Koloff twice, but Koloff is able to come out of it. The match ends when the referee is distracted, and while the referee is distracted, Ricky Steamboat comes to the top. But Terry Gordy, like, pushes him off right into the waiting arms of his lover, Big Dick, Dr. Death Steve Williams. Mm-hmm. Death is holding Ricky Steve when he runs him into the turnbuckle, and then he hits him with a spine buster for the win. This is the longest match on this pay-per-view. Hey. But the pacing of this match, it makes it feel like it's like a forever match. This is so I, fucking long. I hated this match. I, yeah, I got to say something. I don't think Miracle Violence was that good of a tag team. I don't think this is the second match I've seen of them, and it's just it's just not good. And Doctor Death Steve Williams, he he, you know what? It's like it's like getting stale bread. It's like it's like you go to a fancy restaurant and they're like, here here's our and they just give you a place stale bread. Like, can I have anything else? And they're like, no. You have to eat the stale bread, and everyone around you is acting like the stale bread is fucking fantastic, and you get a bill for like five hundred dollars. It's like. I, he is just so I don't get it. I don't get what Jim Ross and Bill Watts saw in him. He has nothing, and he has no appeal to me. And um, this tag team stunk. Uh, uh, maybe their Japan matches were better. I don't know, but we're not reviewing Japan shows. Uh, I don't know. I think You're they stay here first, guys. Steve Williams, stale bread. Yeah, <laughs> and then Nikita Cole, Ricky Steamboat. They don't have chemistry as a tag team. Um, they were put together just because like they were faces and they, they don't have chemistry and it just goes on and on and Ricky Steamboat can't carry I guess if Ricky Steamboat and Terry Gordy had a singles match it might have been good you know what annoyed me so in the previous match and the, um, they mentioned Rick Rude is, has beef with Nikita Koloff and then in this match they mentioned Ricky Steamboat and Cactus Jack are really like they're having a hard time like then why don't you just have these fucking grudge matches on the paper. Why are you wasting everyone's time with, with this shit? And I think they're wasting everyone's time with this shit because they, I think they thought that Steve Williams and Terry Gordy are going to be like our top stars and we want to show it with this fucking stupid tournament. And it, it's just like, no, they they have nothing. I, Terry Gordy should be with the Freebirds. That's where he should be. Not He should be with Michael Hayes. Because I watched it when Michael Hayes on the when I was watching the world class stuff after Iron Claw, that's a that's a good example of like the Hart Foundation or Beer Money, where one guy's one way and the other guy's the other way and it works. And instead, he's with this fucking guy and it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. I hate it. I hated this match. This match was the turning point for me because um, up until this point, the first three matches. While they're not the best matches, they're also not, like, bad matches either, where I'm, like, really, like, losing my attention. Mm -hmm. This match is where I started going, like, I started getting drowsy. I really started getting drowsy. I was, like, that's why I was saying, dude, I don't know if I can finish this. I feel sleepy. Like, I have to, like, like, I felt sleepy. And the rest, almost like the rest of the show, I'm going to feel this way. It just, like, sucked so much energy out. You know? Yeah, it's it, it just because like it almost feels like they're not doing anything that the crowd invested. They are just like wrestling to wrestle, and they're just like we have like twenty something fucking minutes, and we're not gonna do. Which it was like in Ricky Steam, nobody seemed like they get, gave a shit. Nobody in the rings feel like they gave a shit to like get the crowd, and it's really disappointing seeing Ricky Steamboat come to this, where he's just like killing time to kill time, and man, I, it was. Ricky Stimo was trying to wrestle Dr. Death's wrestling game, which is yes, because I that. think that was I, a mistake. I think that was a mistake. Because I think they were told that we're gonna focus on Dr. Death. Yeah, okay. and I think Ricky Stimo was like, Oh, I could match you with your mat work. And it's like you really can't. There was actually one person who could, and we're gonna get into that later, but Ricky Stimo could not actually. It just was I like hated. horrible match. Mm-hmm. I hate it. This is my this is my least favorite match of this, this show. Okay. Well, actually, both my least so, favorite matches have the Miracle Violence connection. They were not good on this show. Yeah, on this show, this is they only have two matches. This was by far the worst one. 
Yeah. It's so long. It's the longest match of the pay-per-view. It's so long. So and, long. like, it's just, like, it would be one, like, I don't know. I feel like if you get, if you put uh, Pillman and Liger versus, like, um, Dustin and Barry made it this long, it would be really entertaining. Yes. Mm-hmm. This is, like, you gave a tag team that is not really a tag team this long. It just had no chemistry. It was bad. It was you gave funny. them the longest matches. They'll have was, two of the longest matches. You know what there, gets, right? you know what gets me? about this show and about this era is that w- they were like shitting on WWE for being clownish and cartoonish and then, and next month they have a main event that has inspired so many people to become wrestlers and a main event like you know Bret Harvest British Bulldog you know what I mean and mm-hmm. it's like they thought this was like their idea of like good wrestling and meanwhile like you want to you can talk about Papa Shango you can talk about the Mountie. You can talk about Skinner. But when when they had a stadium, when they got Wembley, they changed a lot of lives with that match. And this fucking company just, man, they just don't know what they're doing. Mm-mm, they do not. We're going to go to match number five, another semi match. Hiroshi uh, Hase and Shinya Hashimoto against Dustin Rhodes and Barry Windham. Dustin and Hase, they start the match. The crowd is restless in this match. And I feel like it's because the mood from the previous match just carries right over. Right? Because they realize nothing, nothing exciting is going to happen on this show. They're, they're, that they're not going to make any effort to entertain anyone. They've all, they've realized that. It's not only that, it's another match where most of the match, the fan favorites are just getting beaten on the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, you know the miracle. So the one of the major problems I have with the show, besides the the singles match, almost all the tag team matches are not like back and forth matches. They're all if you watch the Steiner matches, sometimes it's like back and forth, right? When when he went against Sting and Lex Luger, all these matches are like we're gonna beat on the good guys, 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 and you'll do two moves and you'll win. Like the good guys oh, will do two or three win, or you will just beat on you, beat on you, beat on you, and then we'll just win. The, the other There's problem, no the other problem with the show is that you have two teams that people don't have a connection with, which is Miracle Violence and the New Japan team, and they're making the guys that you watch every week look like idiots. Yes, and on them, and it goes on and on and on. And there's no these New Japan guys; they're not going to be on the show next week. You you haven't been watching them for years. They're here, and we're supposed to like what? We're supposed to like, you know, we're supposed to like them because they're from New Japan. And it's like, and you're in the middle of fucking Georgia, and it's like people are invested in Brian Pillman. They're invested in Dustin yeah. Rhodes, and you're doing nothing. You're doing nothing, to, and it's just like, and then the main event is like, is like showcasing two guys nobody gives a fuck about. It's so fucking stupid. Fucking yeah, stupid. I would have had at least a few matches where it's like back and forth, back and forth, though, oh. you know. But this is but like you're sh- you're showcasing these Japanese guys so hard, and they never come back. Yeah, it's just like they're Dustin Rhodes and Barry Windham. They're the they're the people that the crowd the crowd likes them, right? Yes. But most of both their like all three of their matches is just them getting beat on most of the time it's either yeah. dustin selling the whole time or it's barry windham selling the whole time it's never like back and forth with near fall near fall near fall it's not like that at all it's just it's just like we're gonna beat the shit out of you you guys and then you'll somehow like make hit two moves and you'll win it's like nobody and, likes that shit yeah, nobody and you've eliminated that. you've eliminated the Dangerous Alliance, you've eliminated mm-hmm. Brian Pillman, and Jushin Liger, who people do have a connection with. Of all the Japanese wrestlers, they have a connection with him. You've eliminated the Freebirds. These are all characters that people like, and they're gone. And you're stuck with people nobody gives a shit about. Yeah. During this match, though, Jim Ross says to Jesse Ventura, you know, you sound like Greg the Hammer Valentine. And Jesse Ventura goes, that's a compliment. I'm like, well, you sound like a guy who works in a factory. <laughs> I love factory. <laughs> Oh, so in this match, after Dustin Rhodes gets beat on forever, Barry Windham finally gets a hot tag in, and he brings some life back into this match. I'll say uh, he gets Irish whipped into the ropes, and and then Dustin like leapfrogs over him, and Hase just won right into a fucking lariat by Barry Windham for the win. Cool finish, but like I mentioned, it's just like the good guys get beat on, beat on, and they just hit two wins, two matches to win the match. It's stupid. It's like... Uh, 
Not good. No. Tony Schiavone, he is with Magnum TA, and they welcome Ron Simmons, who's in a suit. They talk about the main event. He says, I'm going to be watching this, man. This is very important, and it's next. Sure. Is what we've all come to see. All 8,000 came to watch this match. This is for the WCW world title. Match number six, Big Van Vader with Harley Race. Wait, hold on. I promised this. I got to do it for this match. Oh, see, if you get the $5, you can see that Andrew Lee has put on the Vader mask. Oh, my Vader mask. You look like K-pop, K-pop Vader. Ding on. Yeah, I used, to, I used to wear, I used to buy a lot of wrestling masks like an idiot. Oh, wow. You know what I noticed about this mask? Hmm. It's very uncomfortable. Isn't that how he wrestled in this? I don't know. It's so uncomfortable. I gotta take it off. Actually. Take it off. Take it off. We, we nobody subscribed to our video portion yet, so. Oh, that's fine. That's perfect then. Okay. okay. Anyway, it's Vader versus Sting. Fucking love Vader. They face off, and Sting is just jawing, you know, jaw jacking. He's showing no fear, which is uh, already a fucking mistake because Vader just like hits Sting right away with some stiff fucking shot. Like, Sting's, like, literally getting punched. He's just like, ow, ow. But Sting fires back with his quickness, and he fucking clotheslines Vader out of the ring. The crowd's going crazy because, like, holy shit. He knocked Vader out of the ring. They come back in. He comes back in the ring. They face off again. And and Sting hits him and hits Vader over over again. And Vader is fucking selling. He's bumping for Sting. Crowd's going crazy. Fucking Sting suplexes him. The crowd's going fucking bananas. Sting then goes to do a sunset flip cover, and Vader just sits right on him. Mm-hmm. And it like looks like it killed Sting. Like he's a big guy. And he just fucking just jumped like Yokozuna Bonsai Splash on him. And Vader starts posing right afterwards because he knows that was it. That sit out splash was the game changer. And Vader just starts taking over. And, and it's just beating on Sting moment by moment now. He's just beating on him. You like that set down splash? I like I love everything about this match. This yeah, match it was that that sit out splash, it looked like it was so painful. This match was probably the best thing match we've seen so far. Didn't we see a sting match that was really good? The tag match with and we also saw Cactus Shack. I like this more. Though. Yeah, the Cactus Shack match was good too, you know. Yeah. Um but this is just like these two work so well together. And Sting is, like, doing power moves to Vader. And it doesn't feel like it... I feel like a lot of times, like, when they have, like, people, like, throw Big Show around, it cheapens him. But for some reason, these two made it work. And, dude, it was so nice to get a crowd, like, on its feet. The crowd was so happy during this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Smeltzer said that Sting was, like, not a Hall of Fame-type wrestler or something like that. He's such a fucking idiot. I was like, gotcha. It, it, I think he loves the Miracle Violence connection, right? He, he All loves- my favorite like WCW matches have Sting in it. <laughs> like, this match is when- phenomenal. This match is phenomenal. This match, it's it's fucking insane. How much better this match is than the rest of the show? It's yes. fucking insane, and it's insane how you know happy- why it's back and forth. It's yeah, back and forth. Yeah. So they show a few times, by the way, in this match, they do show Ron Simmons back as he's watching the match sitting with Tony yeah. Schiavone, um, which he's going to play into in the future. But anyways, Sting's getting beat on, and this is one of their – there are a few low moments in this match. There are a few. It's not a perfect match. There's a point where fucking Vader puts on the worst-looking Scorpion Deathlock I have ever seen. Yeah, they probably should Dude, he's not sitting at all, and he's just like he had. He, Sting's back is not arched at all; it's just like bent at the knees. And Sting has to act like it's in fucking pain, and it looks, dude, it looks terrible. It's the worst looking Scorpion Deathlock um, sharpshooter I've ever seen. It's terrible looking. Um, Stinger finally hits like a somersault kick and a DDT that floors Vader, and the crowd's getting back into it. But the thing is this. Sting got beat on so much, he's so exhausted. He can't make the cover. And this is at the 15-minute mark. Vader, for some idiotic reason, climbs to the top. And uh, especially since you can't do that. Remember, it's disqualification if you climb to the top rope. That's stupid. I mean, like, to because he's not up there with uh, Sting. He's up there by yeah, himself, so he's going to clearly jump up. That's yeah. already DQ. It's already dumb. I don't know why he's doing that. But anyway, Sting makes him pay for it. 
by like um, beating on him. And then Sting uses that momentum of him on the rope on the top turnbuckle to fireman carry fucking Vader. He's holding up in a fireman's carry and he Samoan drops him. And this fucking goes, the crowd goes nuts for this, but it only get a two count for that. There is a referee bump and Sting hits a German suplex. He German suplexes fucking big fat Vader with a bridge. Fantastic. But because the referee was down, there was a delay in him getting to the three count and Sting can't get the win. Oh, perfect. That was like, oh, so beautiful. Because you're like, oh, if the referee just hadn't gotten hit, he would have made the three count. And then comes a big moment where I remember, distinctly remember this being a big moment when I was a kid. And now that I've finally seen it, I am not happy with it. Sting hits a stinger splash on one corner. Then he fucking sends Vader to the other corner. And Sting goes for another stinger splash on a bent Vader. This has Sting kind of overshoot, and he is supposed to hit his head on the post. But his head is nowhere near the fucking post in the camera angle that they use, which is like just the hard cam. And you see fucking Sting just going blade. It look it dude, his head was nowhere near the fucking post. Well that his that's head. also there. That's also production's fault. Yeah. Um Sting is now bleeding and he's delirious and he's trying to punch Vader, but he's missing because he's just like he's losing blood and he's tired. Vader just picks him up and hits one very powerful power bomb to win the title. And that is it. He is now the WCW champion. Ron Simmons, Nikita Koloff, and officials try to attend Sting, um, who's down. And they're like, oh, my God, he's hurt. Grizzly Smith is also there. And he's asking Sting, hey, he's where are the young girls at? He goes, have you seen any 14-year-olds in the audience? Yeah, he's like, where are the young girls, Sting? Where are the little like girls? Grizzly Smith. I was like, what a way to ruin a great moment. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, this is, even with its faults, this is probably uh, – must see match in my opinion. Yeah, uh, what I think did you think? I think it's one of the best matches in WCW. Well, it's, it's probably the best match that I've seen so far. WCW nineteen ninety two. It's the match I think that made Vader in America. Um, a tremendous match. One of Sting's. I thought even with the mistakes, one of Sting's best performances. The crowd was into it. Um, this is what it should be about. You know, if I'm someone who overseen Bill Watts, I'd be like. More of that, less of whatever the fuck that other bullshit was. And, um, you know, great match. And um, I loved it. I loved it. I had a great time in this match. This match is so good. It, it saves, but it saves the show from being completely unwatchable. But it's, it is unwatchable. The show. Yeah. Not the match, the show. We're talking about the show. Yeah, if watch... you can find this match somewhere or just fast forward to it, do that. Mm -hmm. You should yeah, watch absolutely. this match. I've... Mm -hmm. I've been wait. I ha I've been waiting thirty two years to watch this match, and it was worth it. Unlike yeah, Hogan or Taker, which was not worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So Tony Schiavone, he's with Magnum TA, and they're discussing what just happened because everybody is kind of in shock. I can't believe Sting lost. Magnum, to his credit, he looks. He does a great job looking disappointed, you know, mm -hmm. and he's like. You know what? I don't care. Sting is still number one in my book. And I was like, yeah, man. Because, like, he... Magnum TA is pretty much useless this whole time. This whole show is useless. But this one moment, he's, like, does what he's supposed to do. He just, they just didn't want to get rid of him because of an accident. They were like, we have Yeah. To he, in this one moment, he, like, he symbolized, I think, how everybody who's a fan of Sting's feeling. Like, they're really disappointed in how he lost. Because Sting didn't lose due to some cheating. He lost clean, but he lost clean due to like, you know, like um, an unforeseen thing, you know? Yeah. And, and I, you know what? I don't care. Even if he lost clean, he's still number one in my book. Like that was like perfect. The epitome of being just a super disappointed, but being like, I don't care. He's still the best in my opinion. I love that part. Yeah. He is with the new champion, Big Van Vader and Harley Race and horses. Harley Race is like, oh, look at that. We told you he's the champion now. Vader's like, the pain game is over. All right? It's over for Vader because now he stands as champion. But Kino, he does try, he does avoid the whole rematch question that Bish, Eric Bischoff asks him. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Love that match. You know I what I do not love? This last match. 
Dude, I got to say, it's one of the biggest. So my whole life, because I knew that I knew at this event, Sting lost to Vader. I always thought that was the main event of the show. And when I found out year a couple of years ago that, that it was the finale of this of this tournament was the dude, why would they do that? Watching it, it's even dumber. Like people go from 60 to zero so fucking fast. The crowd, the moment this match starts, what a way to end on a miserable note. I guarantee you people walked out of there. There were parents who took their kids, walked out, like, I'm never taking wrestling again. That was horrible. Yeah. I think like 8,000 people were here and they lost 8,000 fans. <laughs> you know what? There's never been another show in Albany, Georgia. I've never had another show in Albany, Georgia. Yeah. You know how bad this show is? You're not going to see another Great American Bash until 1995. <laughs> like, that's how bad this show is, 1992. Anyway, it's for the NWA Tag Team Championships, the final special guest referee, because it's, well, it's Ole Anderson. You know it's going to be a good match. Ole's in it. Dr. Death Steve uh, Williams and uh, Ban- Terry Gordy versus Dustin Rhodes and Barry Windham. There's so much wrong with this match. There's so oh. much wrong with this match, and it even starts before the match even begins. The fucking Steiner brothers come out ringside, and Ole has to send them back. And this was such a fucking huge mistake, having the Steiners come out, because all it made me do was, like, I wish they were in this fucking match. So why? And you could tell that's what the crowd was thinking, because when these Steiners come out, the crowd goes crazy for them. Yeah. And they're not involved in this match at all. They just come out just to be like, hey, you guys, just wanted to let you know, you're going to get a shitty main event. That's basically like what it was like the Steiners were saying. Barry Windham and Dr. Deadly start, and it's, once again, it's that, like, long feeling out process. Once again, it's a lot of mat work. Jeffy Ventura, on a commentary, has to say, you know, the crowd is still stunned from Sting losing to explain how fucking quiet it is. Right? He says that. He goes, you know, I think the crowd is still stunned from Sting losing. That's why they're just like in disbelief. But it's not because of that. It's because Dr. Death has a very bad, boring mad game. Now, those of you that I'm going to explain to you, you know who's got a really um, entertaining, interesting mad game? Who's that? Daniel Bryan, Zack Sabre Jr. Because they'll do actual moves. They'll do different I'll you, submissions. I'll give you a third person. Kurt Angle. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Death's mad game is just like headlocks on the floor. You know? Dr. Death sucks. He's he sucks. He he makes a face when he wins the title, which this goofy fucking doofus face. And and I'm like, this guy had no charisma. He had no idea how to he he just Bill Watts and Jim Ross. Really, really liked him to the point where I don't. I'm not sure Jim Ross and Steve Williams weren't like fucking sucking each other's cock in the back, because it's like, dude, this guy stinks. This guy stinks, and and they just they just keep focusing on him. Yeah, he sucks, bro. Jim Ross said he got the nickname in ninth grade uh, for beating people up, but I think he got the nickname Doctor Death because he kills all momentum and excitement in wrestling. Of a show, yeah, yeah. The only time I actually enjoy Dr. Death's mat work, the only time it actually gets interesting is when Dustin Rhodes got in there. Because yeah, Dustin, Dustin Rhodes, Rhodes is great. Yeah, Dustin Rhodes realizes this shit is boring. So he does this thing where when Matt, or when Dr. Death puts him in like a fucking headlock on the floor, he's going to come out of it and he's going to try to hit like a drop kick or whatever, get back into it, come back out of it, hit another move, Somehow get back into it, kick out of it, and come back. Just, just, just the speed of it gets the crowd kind of like, oh shit, you know, like. And I was like, man, Dustin Rhodes, he's so good in like any role you put him in, you know. Like, hey, we need you to do mat work. He's like, oh, I can do fucking good. I'll do exciting. How was he with? How was the match with the Swerve at World's End? Um, it was. So that match is a little. So the, let's think about that match at World's End. It was originally supposed to be Swerve and Keith Lee. Yeah. So it started. I think Keith Lee's done. I don't think. I don't think yeah. He's it started off as a disappointment because I didn't. I because I didn't watch the pre-show and I didn't know that he got replaced. So I, when I was there live, I was just like, "Wait a minute, why is Dustin Rhodes coming out?" I was like, "It just made no sense to me, right?" And I was already disappointed. But Dustin Rhodes, they started off with Swerve 
just attacking his leg and Dustin's like, oh, I can't do the match and he's getting carried to the back and Dustin goes, you know what? No, I want to fucking do this match. And oh, he cool. goes back into the ring and they have a match. And believe it or not, it's actually, I don't know if whose idea it was, but just doing that helped kind of overcome the disappointment that we weren't finally seeing Keith Lee versus Swerve. Like, yeah. like this, when Dustin comes out, all you're thinking is, I man, what the fuck? I thought I was finally going to see Keith Lee versus Swerve. And by doing that, I hurt my leg and actually the match is not going to take place. No, fuck it. I'm, I'm going back in. It kind of, and then, you know, you work on the leg the whole time. It kind of made you forget all about Keith Lee. So it was a good match in that sense. He, he's really got a good mind for wrestling, Dustin Rose. You know, mm-hmm. it made me realize his nickname is The Natural. Because they were like so surprised at how quickly he picked everything up, right? He and should I, have been. Yeah. He should, you know. Bruce Pritchard's two ideas for when he comes back at WrestleMania Nine was to have Dustin Rhodes or Scott Steiner in the main event. And you know, you listen to it, you're like, "What? That's dumb." But then when you actually are watching these shows, which I'm sure he was home in because he was fired in '92, so he's probably watching these shows that we're watching. He's, I could see '93 Dustin Rhodes and Scott Steiner being put in the main event in WWE and excelling, you know? I agree. They're both just that good. It's just the fact that that they both became cartoon characters when they got older that we don't understand how good these fucking guys were. If you you book them seriously, how good they could have been. By the way, during this mat mat work between, uh, this mat exchange between Dustin Rhodes and Dr. Death, where Dustin just keeps kicking out and trying to, you know, even though he keeps getting back in the move, um, yeah, Jim Ross goes, Dustin's got a lot of guts. And, and Jesse Ventura goes, Yeah, you know, he probably gets it from his dad. You know, who's got a real big gut <laughs> or something like he goes, really you know, He makes a fat joke about his dad, uh, which Jim Ross is totally ignores, but I thought it was funny. Uh, Barry Windham, he gets in the ring with the, uh, Dr. Death and he fires up, but then Barry gets sent into the post, and then there's more heat on your fan favorites. And at this point, I'm just like, I just need this match. That's all I need at this point. I'm like, please, just gotta. I would have, if I was an executive, I would have fired Bill Watts like immediately after this paper. I would have fired. Uh, him. Yeah, I don't understand. He kept the job after this show. This yeah. show was atrocious, and the fact too that he, so Jake the Snake agreed to like this great deal, and the yes. fact that Bill Bill Watts when he shows up, Bill Watts tears it up and chases Jake the Snake out of the company. Like it's just like oh my god this fucking guy, Bill. I I listened to a shoot interview where Jake when he said when Bill Watts dies I'm gonna pee on his grave, and I hope he does. I hope I hope Jake. Yeah, I hope he does. Yeah, yeah. He like Bill Watts supposedly like looked at the contract and like said you got to be kidding me. He just ripped it up like in front of Jake Roberts' face. This a is, year Bill after he has, has been, Bill Watts has also been accused of being super racist by. He's not yeah, I a believe. good person. He's not a good person. I mean, the fact that he he kept Grizzly Smith and told Jake the Snake to go fuck himself tells you everything you need to know about this guy. Yes. And um, but dude, a year like we watched a year after Jake the Snake has had the hottest run. I mean, dude, it's like it's it's like if Roman Reigns walked into AEW and Dean Malenko just tears up his contract. Like, did, like, are you kidding? You hand you're handed a I know Jake has problems. But you're kind of handed a gift with this guy. Yeah. And man, this fucking and this show is just oh, it's so this main event, this main event made me angry. It made me angry. Yeah. I got yeah. angry with the people that paid money to see the show. Yeah. So after Barry Windham gets beaten on, Dustin Rhodes makes the hot tag in. But then he gets beaten on again. And I'm like, when when are we getting the final hot tag? When is it happening? Because I was thinking, surely the good guys are going to win. Surely you have to, you have to have the fans go home happy because you had Sting, their fan favorite, lose. So you got to have at least a happy ending where the fan favorite team has to win, right? No, wrong. Because Doctor Death clotheslines Dustin Rose for the win. So I don't know if it ends like that. The crowd is so annoyed. I'm annoyed. It, it just like this was this was terrible in so many reasons. Why the miracle violence connection? Now they're both the NWA tag team champions and the WCW tag team champions, and this is 
this match was so bad because if it was Nobody back cares forth, these guys and their pushes on earth. Yeah, if this match was back and forth, back and forth, and like the MVC wins due to skin of their teeth or like whatever, then it's like, all right, it's acceptable. Like what happened with Sting? Mm -hmm. But they're just beating on Dustin and Barry Wyndham the whole time. The whole time, it's Dustin and Barry Wyndham getting their ass kicked. And then they just lose. It made Dustin and Barry look like – they made them look weak. They made them look like losers, like Bill Watts' son. So that's what so it you, look like. So, you know, um, at this point when Bill Watts has all the power, Jim Ross is his set right-hand man. And Jim Ross is helping him with a lot of decision-making. And then, you know, when Bill Watts gets ousted, they out Jim Ross too. They actually tell him, we're going to turn you into a salesman if you want to stay with the company. And I believe, and Jim Ross always acts like, "What a, you know, how could they do this to me?" I believe the reason was that when they look back on how bad these shows were, they're like, "Well, Jim Ross is helping him; he's also got to go." This guy, if Jim Ross, if Jim Ross, if these are the shows that Jim Ross helping put together, Jim Ross is also a fucking idiot. Yes, this is atrocious. I agree. This is atrocious. This show. Um, I don't. I. I just. I've never been more grateful. I've never been more happy to go back to WWF than I am. These three shows in a row, uh, Russell War was was fun, but three shows like this in a row were rough. This is not a good period for WCW. It's not at all. I have a feeling into it, like as when we get into 95, 96, I have a feeling our opinion of Eric Bischoff is going to go way up. Because the thing about it is, you know, you can kind of be like this, that, and the third, but when you actually sit and watch these shows... Like I, I thought Bill Watts was kind of dopey. I now think he's he he might be he's I I think he's mentally ill. That's how bad this shit is. Oh, uh, I could see he's somebody who doesn't get it. Like he's you know what this is like Bill Watts. Like the problem is like it's not his money, and that's why he's such a fucking idiot. Yeah, you know? like if I guarantee you, if this if if it was his company. The moment the first pay per view after this, he would have been. I think he would have been like, "Dude, I can't keep losing money like this." You know, yeah, I gotta yeah. change it. And but I no, instead he he's forsaking this company to push his friend, which is his Steve. friend. He, yeah, yeah, he's using the company. And Jim to push Ross, yes, are pushing these two guys. Which listen, it's great if you think these guys are a good tag team. That's fine. I'm not gonna argue with it. But they do not deserve the position they've been in the last two shows. No, at all at all. By the way, Tony Schiavone and Magna TGA, they're with the new fucking tag team champions, the Miracle Violence Connection, and Dr. Death plugged the fucking fucking hotline. Uh, call the hotline if you want to talk to me. I'm like, nobody wants to talk to you, bro. Um, Magna TA with the line of the night, he goes, a lot of excitement tonight. And I'm like, no, fuck you, you fucking liar. <laughs> a lot of excitement tonight. Fuck you. <laughs> Let's go over the next four weeks. Next week. Wait. Wait, wait. We gotta, yeah. I gotta mention the final part. They cut back Jesse Ventura, Jim Ross, mm -hmm. and Jesse Ventura. This is what I love about Jesse Ventura. He's so on it, you know. And he goes, I'm "Not a happy crowd here tonight." <laughs> he goes, I'm "Not a crappy crowd here tonight because all the heroes got beat." He is smart enough to acknowledge that. This was a bad show because all the heroes lost. But he said, but he made, he puts it in K-Fang terms. But yeah. yeah, and then he goes, but things like this happen in WCW, and I was like, yes, and this yeah, is why WWF was kicking your fucking ass. Yeah, End show, finally. Yeah. Until they got Hogan, who knew how to fucking book, kind of. Yes. Um, next four weeks, in theory, we're gonna get to these. Uh, next week, SummerSlam '92 with Bret Hart. Versus British Bulldog. You want to know like, what show you're looking forward to most? I'm not looking forward to this show the most. I got to get the fuck out of Bill Watts land. I'm so happy to be in like... I'm so happy to be in Bret Hart world after this shit. Yeah. And the funny thing is, these guys were... I guarantee you these guys are sitting there with their beer in their beer and like they're watching SummerSlam 92 and everyone going crazy. This is not wrestling. This is not wrestling. This is not right. Shut the fuck up. And then I feel like they're going like, do they watch? They go like, and you see the fucking crowd going crazy. They go like, it's yeah. all right. They go, it's all right. But you know what? 
I got more John Blaze than that. I got WCW is more John Blaze than this. I, I, I feel like that's what they're saying. They're like, we we got it's so two bad. weeks. We're back to Bill Watts Lance, Halloween Havoc '92, the main event, Jake the Snake versus Rick Rude. In three weeks, Survivor Series '92. Thank God we got more Bret Hart. Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels. Woo! They're so happy to see the HBK. Then in four weeks, Starcade '92, Sting versus Vader, and another Battle Bowl tournament. Oh my God! Are you serious? Ah uh, yeah. So this fucking company, after the sh- after that shitty fucking '91 tournament, and in this fucking shitty tournament, they got their WrestleMania, and they decide to do. I mean, they it's not as it's not as big as the tournament the year before. They decided in a three years in a row they do a tag team tournament at fucking Starcade, and then. They sit and they wonder, and you got to fucking pontificate of why they eventually went out of business. This stuff didn't help, all right? Eric Bischoff was already... Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about Eric Bischoff. He already had 90... They were like, imagine that like you have to clean your bedroom and you walk in, there's 90 pounds of dog shit in that bedroom, all right? You're already working at disadvantage to get this room spotless, okay? So like, dude, this shit didn't help. This shit did not help. Dude, you know how I feel about Eric Bischoff. Yeah, I, I, I think he should no longer be in the wrestling business. I hate hearing about this. Is what he inherited. But I will say this: I am looking forward to seeing what he's gonna bring because this is horrendous shit. This is horrendous. Jim, um, Jim, um, Jim Crockett did a terrible job, right? And Bill Once Watt Rick- is what? showing me nothing. Once Ric Flair leaves, this company fucking collapses. Like they fucking, it's 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 insane how one guy, one guy who they couldn't wait to get rid of, um, was fucking holding this place together. It's fucking ins- it's just insane. Ah, I, I this show made me mad. Like like you know, no, I'm, yeah, yeah, dude. I'm going through, I'm going through <laughs> something. I was I was this show I know. I'm mad at myself. I got mad at you. I was like I I'm can't mad at myself. To- yeah, I was like, I can't believe I have to waste my Friday like this. But dude, oh. dude, I, I, you know, I'm going through something right now, and I'm just sitting there last night for three of the longest hours of my life watching this show. Couldn't even get my mind off it because it's so fucking, it's so insultingly bad. I, and I don't even think Vance had his <laughs> worst. It made something this insultingly fucking bad. Like just you just wait, and you're wasting their bodies. These fucking guys are being thrown their heads and their fucking backs. Half of them are dead now, and you can't blame the talent. Here's the thing: you can't blame the talent because uh, six years later, they most of these wrestlers are in the Attitude Era in WWF, and they destroy WCW. Ron Simmons, Goldust, Brian Pillman, Steve Austin, uh, even Rick Rude is there with DX. Fucking uh, so many people that are on. The, even Steve Williams is there for half a minute. They're all there, and they destroy WCW. So you can't even blame this roster. It's all Bill Watts. This fucking moron. And Jim you Ross. Know, I bet you if Vince McMahon was watching, I, I doubt he watched this shitty fucking uh, Great American Bash. But if he did, I bet you he would have been like, why am I trying so hard? I bet you he was like, I know. like why, why am I trying so hard? I don't have to fight as hard to well, beat Well, he me. stops trying, and that's why they eventually just, they almost put him out of business. No, when that's you- true. Good point. Ah, good yeah. point. When you think of the roster that the 90, when you compare the WWF roster in 98 to the WCW roster, it is insane that that was the year where the, where the tide was turned and it ne- and they never looked back. Like, like that rock, we'll, we'll get to it. Let's not talk about 98. Right now. Um, Dude, anyway, wait until we get to that, actually. I got to get out of this shitty WCW. It's so bad. I, 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 let me tell you, I can't wait. I think he leaves. His last, yes, his last show is Super Bowl three because uh, that's when Jim Ross gets fired too. So after Super Bowl three, we don't have to deal with Bill Watts anymore. Oh, good. And then, it, but it doesn't take; it takes a little bit for Bischoff to start really exerting control. He more or less is just like trying to like I don't know. We'll 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 get to it, guys. If you enjoyed this, we have a Patreon. Um, Goots comedy. Uh, I gotta change this. What's the name of the podcast? I'll do that. I'll do that when I get back from California. Uh, so, you know, subscribe. Write, write a review, leave a YouTube comment. Let's talk about it. How bad this show was. If you're if you live in Albany, Georgia, let us know what you think. And uh, you I'm ready to the show. Let us know. 
like how you were feeling and everything. Yeah. Like that guy from Star K ninety one was like, I wanted to fucking slit my throat when I when I was there. I can't believe Star K ninety one is so bad and they do this again and it's this is bad. And then Star K ninety two, like, let's do it a third time. Yeah, it's insane. It's These insane. people are insane. Yeah. Well, maybe that maybe Star K ninety two is that bad. Anyway, guys, that's it. We'll see you next week for SummerSlam ninety two. Goodbye, Andrew Lee, bro. Bye.